Hi cozy friends! Today we're going to be talking about healing slash reconnecting with your inner child. If you were to ask me how I would kind of define inner child, like what even does that mean? What does inner child mean? To me I feel like your inner child is really how you look at the world and looking at the world in more of a pure, unjaded, grateful way. And it also to me is your identity, yourself, your true, true spirit inside of you. Kind of before different factors, different people might have kind of subdued that and push that down in different ways whether it was belittling you or punishing you just really taking that childlike spirit away from you in different ways for me it's less about like returning to being a child or like returning to a childlike state and it's more about reclaiming your true self and it's more about identifying and making important what really makes you happy in life and kind of centering what brings you that childlike joy before kind of the weight of the world pushed us down a little bit made us a little more jaded. Also before the world told us we had to turn our full attention to like work and I don't know building families whatever the world kind of tells us we have to be doing. What did we like before that? What did we want to focus on? What did we want to spend our days doing? That kind of mental processes and true acceptance of yourself and what you know you like deep in your heart. That's kind of what I really find valuable about reconnecting with your inner child. I think it's also really valuable for unlearning negative self-talk because I think a lot of us don't come out of the the womb with negative self-talk, we're taught that either from parents, friends, teachers, whoever it is growing up, we're taught that. We're taught to talk to ourselves in a certain way. We're taught to criticize ourselves in a certain way. We're taught to scrutinize every little thing that we do because that's what other people did for us growing up. And so reconnecting with your inner child, healing your inner child also means unlearning that process and kind of reteaching yourself how to talk to yourself kindly, how to teach yourself kindly, how to be patient with yourself. And that can really change so many aspects of your life. So now that we've got all the basics down, we've got the why, we've got the what, now I want to move into the how. So here are my favorite methods for healing and reconnecting with your inner child. Number one is arguably the most difficult and that is journal prompts and letter writing. This is something that a lot of therapists recommend and what it is is taking a prompt that makes you think about basically how you would talk to yourself as a child. A little baby you, so innocent and pure. <laughs> you imagine that baby version of you and you reflect on certain things while holding that vision of yourself in the forefront. So for journal prompts, there's like a ton you can find on like Pinterest, Instagram, TikTok, wherever. And usually it's going to be like, put yourself in the shoes of you as a child. What would you want to do right now? What would you be feeling in this moment? How would you feel if somebody spoke to you like this instead of this? How would you like to be encouraged in this moment? How would you speak to yourself when you have these insecurities? So kind of imagining this baby version of you, putting them to the forefront of issues you might be currently going through or feelings you might be currently having. Really imagining a version of yourself that you feel more comfortable easily being kinder to and more patient with. I think this is particularly helpful for journaling through affirmations. So if you feel a little bit weird pointing out positive things about yourself or encouraging yourself on a daily basis or kind of like complimenting things you did throughout the day or complimenting yourself, if that feels a little difficult for you, then replacing you in that context with baby you, you know, and putting baby you in that context, that makes it so much easier, I think, for some people. And eventually you'll learn to be able to accept that like baby you really is you <laughs> and you deserve that love and patience and kindness too. Journal prompts like that, I think really help with positive self-talk, healing old wounds, things like that. Letter writing is kind of another category of this, very similar, but a little more direct and kind of a little more re-traumatizing. So this is something you definitely have to do when you're in the right headspace. But this is something that I had a therapist suggest to me and it was basically go home and write a letter to yourself as a child. What would you say to her? What would you reassure her about? What would you walk her through? You know, what would you kind of warn her about but prepare her for in a loving way? How would you love them and make them feel cared for, seen, and held, and supported in maybe the way that you didn't feel like you were growing up? And this does not have to be reserved for like people who just had traumatic childhoods only, you know? Like you might have had parents who were really busy or parents who 
who were not emotionally mature yet at the point they were parenting you. Everyone's experiences growing up affects them in different ways and affects them in different levels of extremity, I guess. <laughs> so don't discount this and say, well, I had an okay childhood, so I don't really have to do that. This process of writing a letter to your younger self might reveal some things to you that you kind of pushed aside or you kind of made excuses for people about. It might make you realize I wasn't seen and heard and held in the way that I should have been and because of that now I react to situations like this or I am hard on myself for this. Everything has a cause and everything has an effect and I think this is just such a beautiful way to heal those kind of childhood wounds no matter how large or small that they may be because all of our wounds are valid <laughs> and need dressing in adulthood for us to feel like we are emotionally growing and emotionally healing. So while this is like one of the most helpful and direct ways to kind of touch back with your childhood self and really heal those childhood wounds and childhood traumas, it is pretty difficult and I would definitely recommend taking it slow. If you have somebody to talk to, like a therapist, while you're working through this, if you're doing like a series of letters, absolutely do that. Be patient with yourself, be kind to yourself, and know that it's okay if you need like a little break, you need a moment, and you can't just spend, you know, hours diving back into these, these old wounds. Okay, moving on to kind of lighter <laughs> tips and tricks. One thing I love to do is collecting different things that I either loved as a child or I kind of wish that I could have as a child. So this kind of includes like reading nostalgic books, like collecting old books that you loved as a child, reading those, collecting toys you loved as a child, collecting games you loved as a child, anything that just let you escape to that happy place as a child and you have just such positive memories with, tap back into those, pull those out from the vault and see if it doesn't bring you the exact same amount of joy and happiness. I guarantee you it will. I guarantee because I have done the same for so many different aspects and areas of my interest as a child, whether it's toys, whether it's books. I've been collecting things from my childhood for like the past four or five years and it just, it brings the same amount of joy. It's unmatched. <laughs> it's amazing how I can be in my late 20s and like things from 20 years ago are still bringing me the same unparalleled amounts of joy. It's amazing. So definitely look on like eBay for things, Mercari. If you have stuff from your childhood, I got rid of everything when I was a kid. I was, I was one of those kids who was like on to the next thing get rid of everything but if you do have like storage at your parents house storage somewhere from things from your childhood go through it rifle through those things look through your old childhood art projects and school assignments and stickers you collected and books you love look through them all and really just like spend a day spend a week spend a month however long it takes to go back and reconnect with those things because your inner child will just like burst with joy <laughs> the next thing is noticing the little things this is something that i think is more reconnect connecting with your inner child in a way. As children, I feel like you always notice the little things. You think about the little things. You sit there and you look out the car window and you watch the rain fall down the window and you're racing them in your head and making up all these little scenarios with just like little things in front of you. There's imagination, there's patience, there's presentness of mind. Kind of this wonder about the world and curiosity about the world. It's almost as if you're seeing a lot of things for the first time because sometimes you are as a child. You literally are seeing things for the first time you've ever seen in your life. But sometimes it's just like this noticing of something that is part of your everyday life. You know, as a child, you look outside your backyard and you're like, man, I'm out here all the time, but I'm just now noticing this tree and I'm going to go spend an hour just playing in this tree and discovering every part of this tree that I never noticed before and make up stories about this tree and have this like make-believe session with this tree. I think there's so much to learn from how we operated in the world as children and I think noticing the little things is such a big one because as an adult it really does make you feel more present, feel more grateful, feel more mindful in general of your surroundings and then also your feelings. It really helps you kind of like touch base with yourself and look around and be like I might be feeling sad today. Like, <laughs> I'm looking out at the rain, I'm noticing the little things, I'm noticing the clouds, I'm noticing xyz and I think I'm realizing this is sadness and I'm gonna sit with this and I'm going to honor this feeling and I'm 
going to do what I need to do to feel all the feels, let the sadness take over, and then let it pass. Because that's what we should be doing with our emotions is like feeling them. Feel it to the fullest extent, look at it objectively, process it if needed, and let it pass. So I think noticing the little things definitely helps you also notice your emotions and the things going on in your inner world, not just your outer world. And then I just think in a more whimsical sense, you're noticing little things. You're noticing the dust flying by because the sun's beaming into your window. You're noticing the bunnies outside. You're noticing the smell of the air changing because of the seasons. You're noticing certain flowers blooming. Like there's such a beauty in the world and there's so much to be grateful for in just nature and also like the people around you. So much of life is go, 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 go. And then go to sleep and then wake up and go, go, go again. That really taking the time to slow down, stop, notice the little things is almost revolutionary. Not to be corny, but it, it really is. It's going against everything that our current society is telling us is important, which is go, 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 go. If we say, I refuse, actually, I refuse, and actually I'm going to pay attention to the little things and I'm actually gonna stop and slow down and not go, go, go for once. You are a change maker. <laughs> and whether it's just a change maker in your own internal world and that helps you grow and connect with your inner child, fine. But also I think it makes you a change maker in the world in general. And that's really cool. One of the ways I've been loving to notice the little things around me is some outdoor photography. And thanks to our sponsor Skillshare, I've been learning a lot about outdoor photography that I never thought I would learn. I love Skillshare. I've worked with them before and I used them for years and years before I even worked with them. I yearn for the learning. I yearn for the skills. Any new skill I can pick up, I want to pick it up. I am a sponge for new hobbies and interests and skills and learning. And Skillshare is the perfect place for that because it is the largest online learning community. Thousands of online classes led by like industry pros in film, illustration, design, freelance. This is absolutely the year to invest in yourself and your interests. And there's so many fun skills and classes and hobbies that definitely help you tap into your childlike interests and the childlike wonder. My favorite things that I learned from men's class are looking with intention. Look at something you might not like spend that much time looking at usually and see if there's some beauty in it. And then also looking at lights and shadows instead of just the object in front of you. Skillshare also has learning paths which are these curated collection of classes that suit your specific interests. I use Procreate all the time for work so I'm really excited to dive into this learning path. If you're interested in picking up some new skills the first 500 people to use the link in my description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. You can get started learning today. Thank you Skillshare. The next thing is reframing your identity and this one is something I've kind of recently realized. It was just a random day of me reflecting on how I used to think as a child and how I used to kind of imagine my future self as a child and how I used to imagine my identity as a child. And it was not this rigid set in stone thing like it is as an adult. I think as an adult, we stop seeing our future selves as malleable. We stop seeing our future selves as something that we are currently like shaping and have a active role in like making it become what it's gonna become. And instead we kind of go, okay, no, this is who I am now. This is just who I am. And for me, that looked like, you know, I was never a person that really liked making a habit out of movement and like working out. And instead of saying, you know, I'm going to become somebody who's good at that eventually. I'm just working towards it. I'm working towards it. Instead, my mindset was, I'm not somebody who likes to work out. I don't like to work out. I'm not a, I'm not an active person. I'm not a fitness person. I'm not a fitness girly. That's just not me. Similarly, I would say, I don't like to cook. I hate cooking. I'm not a cook. I just don't cook. And all of those are such like limiting mindsets and limiting things that we are telling ourselves and like it's setting in stone our identity when we haven't even lived <laughs> that truth yet. We don't know. We have no idea who we're going to be 10, 20 years in the future. But if we keep telling ourselves in the present, I'm not that, I'm not that, I'm not that, then we're not going to become that. We'll never become that if we keep telling ourselves that. And I think as children, we had such a different view on life. Like the world was our oyster. There was, there was nothing stopping future us from being anything, you know? Like even the next day, the next week, I would imagine myself as a completely different person with a completely different identity. I'd be like, okay, tomorrow I'm gonna be the girl who wears jeans under my skirt. And I did, you know, because you're a kid and you're like, I can do whatever. I can be whoever. I'm not anything set in stone yet. I'm not a set identity. And I don't think anything has to change about that mentality when you're an adult. You're not a set in stone person yet. You're you, you're you're evolving, you're always evolving. You can continue to evolve until your last breath on this earth. There's nothing telling you that you can't. And if there is, if there's people in your life telling you that you can't change and evolve and you shouldn't and you shan't, get them out, get them out, get them out. <laughs>
<laughs> you don't want that kind of energy around you. You want people who are supporting your growth and rooting for you and excited about whichever new identity you kind of want to take up and get excited about and work on. Think about little you and how little you viewed yourself and your habits and how you dressed, how you worked, what your goals were in life, your profession in life. It changed daily or maybe it didn't and you had, you know, like a set view of who you wanted to be but you knew you could get there and if kind of somewhere along the way you lost that sureness in yourself, you lost that certainty, try and touch back into that childhood either freedom to <laughs> accept whatever future you might have in front of you or sureness in the fact that you can reach that goal. You can do it before the world told you no, 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 no. You know? The next tip is trying to see the good in everything and everyone. As children, we have no reason to like doubt the world around us. We're like, yeah, everything is good. Everything's sick and people are really nice to me and really cool actually. <laughs> and it's not until you kind of come across crappy people, crappy situations, you learn about bad things going on in the world, that changes, that shifts, and you focus more on the negative than you do on the positive. A little challenge for you is to try and have your first thought be the positive one. It doesn't have to be your last thought. You might start with the positive thought and you might come to the conclusion that, oh no, this person actually is trash <laughs> or this situation is trash. The job's trash, the world's trash, this person's trash. You might come to that conclusion and that's totally fine because that would be based in reality and that would mean you are a critical thinker <laughs> who can like make a accurate assessment of a situation. However, let's make that first thought the positive one. I know a couple of people where you're kind of just like engaging in regular conversation with them and you can tell that every interpretation that they have, the first interpretation is a negative one. And so like you'll say something and their first interpretation of it is negative and you kind of feel like you're always having to explain yourself with the person. You're like, no, no, no. Like I didn't mean that in the negative way. I meant it in this way or I meant it in a positive way. At least for me, I almost feel bad for them that like they are operating in this world assuming everybody kind of is going to be mean or like has a mean spirit first and foremost or like doesn't have their best interest in mind isn't looking out for them isn't rooting for them it makes me very sad when I kind of come across people like that I think that most people are probably somewhere in the middle I think most people might assume the best and then you know you're sitting there and you're like oh no no but it could be this too most people I think are sitting somewhere in the middle which I would say is also so where I am but then you come across people that are just like always assuming the best and they are like the best people to be around they are so positive they are so easy to just like get along with because nothing you say is ever like misconstrued you're never like butting against them in any way and that doesn't mean like oh they're a pushover oh they whatever no like just because they're nice and they see the best in people and they assume positive intent and everything doesn't mean like if you disrespect them not they're not gonna be like excuse me <laughs> like, that's not what that means it's more just like assume Assuming people mean well and assuming people do have your best interest in mind because a lot of people do and if you have done yourself the service of like surrounding yourself by good people then you should have no reason to automatically assume the people around you who are supposed to be loving and caring are coming at you with like ill intent at every turn. <laughs> so interpersonally I think it's super super important to like just assume the best. Assume the best interpretation of what that person said and assume that people are telling the truth. Assume that people are rooting for you until they prove you wrong explicitly there's no reason not to there's no reason not to you're only kind of putting yourself in this negative spiral and kind of like creating this friction with people that you love for no reason I think this also goes for situations where you know maybe you're like out with a group and you're like oh my god I really don't want to go to like this bar that everybody else wants to go to instead of kind of like stewing in that and like deciding like okay I don't want to go to this so like I'm gonna be upset for the whole time we're at this bar I'm just not gonna have fun like try switching that attitude to like I'm gonna make this fun I'm gonna have a good time whenever I can even if it's not something that I would choose first or like it's not the ideal scenario it's not XYZ like trying to make the best out of a situation trying to like muster up <laughs> the positive energy has always made a night better for me or not just a night like any situation whenever I've like stewed in the negativity and stewed 
in the fact that I really don't like something or I don't want to be somewhere. It's not a night I look back on and think about. It's a night that I have filed away somewhere in like bad nights <laughs> or bad situations. The nights that I have turned it around and I've like pulled myself up out of that mentality, I remember those nights. I'm grateful to myself for kind of being able to put a positive spin on things. Huge caveat here, this is not, this in no way applies to like mental health, to like actually toxic situations. This does not apply to those situations at all, okay? You can't just pull yourself out of a bad mental health space. You can't like pull yourself out of, put a positive spin on a toxic, you know, in work environment. No, it, this is, this doesn't apply to this. This applies to like low stakes things that you do have the capacity to like spin into a positive thing. Like if you don't have the capacity, if you're like overstimulated, if you do want to go home, if whatever, all of that is valid and fine. These are situations where like you have it in you to turn that around. You have it in you to like find the good in that situation or that person. And just for that moment, kind of like have a good time with that person or in that moment, that's the situation. The next thing is engaging in childlike activities. I have childlike in quotes because I don't think they're inherently childlike activities. I think that they have just been kind of coded as childlike. But these are things like coloring, arts and crafts, gaming, basically all the things we do on my channel all the time and talk about on my channel all the time as like our cozy hobbies. I think these are just the most carefree, limitless, like free and happy activities that you could engage in. Doing so just really connects you to that childlike space where it's like a Sunday, it's sunny, the windows are open, you're breathing in that fresh air, you're laying on the floor of your bedroom, your little feetsies are kicking up in the air, you just had a full lunch of your favorite sandwich that your parent makes, your belly's full, you're happy, and you're just coloring. You're just coloring. Or you're cutting construction paper, <laughs> or you're watercoloring, you're painting, playing your favorite game, you're on Club Penguin, <laughs> on Webkins. That feeling I think is like something I'm constantly chasing because there was so much peace in it and so little expectation and so little stress and concern about any other point in time. I was always so present in those moments as a child and I think I'm always chasing that presentness and those particular activities, these kind of childlike activities of coloring and gaming and arts and crafts really put me in that presentness of mind that feels just so freeing and feels so healing and feels like you don't have to think about future stress or past stress even, like current stress. You don't have to think about any of that. You can really just be in the moment because you don't. It's not toxic escapism, you know, where you're not dealing with your problems. You can deal with your problems at another time, but in this moment, you don't have to. You really don't have to. You can put aside your your future, current, past stresses for this moment and just be mindful and be present in a free and healing and happy childlike space because you deserve that. Everybody deserves that. You shouldn't have to constantly be like putting all of your stress and worry and obligations and responsibilities to the forefront of your mind all the time. That's just not sustainable. <laughs> Next is listening to music from childhood and this can be like, I don't know, childhood to adolescence, but anything that really makes you like surge back into the backseat of your car on like a good day, you just got some fast food, licking your ice cream cone after you munched down your little kid's meal, you got your toy that you're really excited about, or like your carpooling to school. Anything that launches you back into that nostalgia of that moment is what I'm talking about, okay? We're making a playlist. Whatever era that is for you, okay, because that's gonna look very different for me than it will for somebody who's late 30s, for someone who's late teens. Whatever generation you're in, it's gonna look very different from each other, okay? But think about those songs. Go through that era. If you need some inspiration, think of one song that you know that brings that nostalgia. Go to Spotify, type in the year that that song was released. Let's say like 2006 playlist. You're gonna get a bunch of popular songs from 2006 and then you're gonna get all of this good material for that playlist. My playlist is called 2000's Happy Brain Time or something like that. It just brings me so much joy and peace. There's nothing better than like connecting in a sensory way to your childhood. Like there's nothing better than that. There is nothing like it. Like the sensory connections, you know, smell, sight, sound. <laughs> I'm like trying to go through all the senses. All of those things, if you have like a candle from when you were a child that like really sparks a certain memory or like a food being cooked, you know? Anything really sensory, I feel like music is like the most extreme version of this, which is why I'm focusing on this. Anything really sensory, bring that back. We're bringing it back, okay? And play it while you're doing your fun activities, while you're doing your cozy hobbies. Play it while you're journaling or have a dance party. Do some karaoke. The next thing's very similar to like the activities, but more specific. Specific, and that's engaging with tactile things. I'm talking like kinetic sand, I'm talking Play-Doh, I'm talking polymer clay, it's the like adult version of Play-Doh if you wanna make some little figurines. I'm talking slime, anything you can like physically feel with your hand, 
hands, different textures, and build something kind of out of nothing. Or you don't even have to actually build something. Like with Play-Doh and polymer clay, you don't have to build something. You can just mess around with it. I think this is really great for having like a de-stressing practice. So like if like a stress ball doesn't work for you, having a little kinetic sand to just kind of do this with here and there. I mean, there's a reason as children, we <laughs> love doing tactile activities and like having little tactile toys to play with because it regulates kind of all of you. It kind of regulates your emotions. It regulates your nervous system. It calms you down. There's a reason. Okay. <laughs> you can either do this very intentionally, like going to get a like sensory bin for yourself. Okay. Because I know that people make sensory bins for the children. Listen, make me a sensory bin. I will love you forever. All right. I don't have one myself, but make me one. We'll be best friends. Or you can just do something like go to the beach <laughs> and like that's your moment to just like have that tactile moment with the sand and have this, you know, lovely sensory experience with the beach and everything. However you need to create that tactile moment for yourself. I guess even cooking can have that same effect. You know, you're baking, you're kneading dough, you're chopping. Tactile. That's all. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> this one is another kind of like therapist recommended activity. This is really to again work on positive self-talk and that is cutting out a picture of childhood you at whatever age makes you most comfy. Cut out a picture of childhood you and put it somewhere where you look at it every day. So like a mirror, at your desk, on the way out the door, on the fridge, <laughs> wherever you feel like you kind of need that reminder the most, put it there so that you can look at childhood you every single day. It's a practice that helps you kind of, again, just reframe your inner thoughts. So if you have negative inner thoughts that you've internalized around food or work ethic, yourself, like personal qualities you have about yourself, your appearance, anything that you've internalized from growing up, from people around you, it helps helps you stop for a sec, remind yourself who you're talking to when those internalized thoughts kind of come out into your conscious, kind of like seep out into actual thoughts that you have that you then validate and internalize. So having this picture of little you makes you a lot more empathetic <laughs> to yourself and it makes you go, oh my God, I cannot talk to myself like that. I can't talk to her like that. Look at her. Oh my God, I cannot talk to her like that. She's doing great. She deserves the world and she does not deserve someone to be speaking to her like this. Positive self-talk will change your life, will change how you view yourself and others. And this is just another way to really hone that skill of positive self-talk and really unlearn the things that you've internalized from the world, the harsh, harsh world, since you are a fresh, unjaded child. I think having a picture of yourself can also kind of help you center on days off or even evenings when you're like, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know what to do. I'm, I might just like scroll on my phone. Maybe you don't even have the thought of, I don't know what to do. You just go from work to home to scrolling on your phone or work from home to like something that you look back on and you're like, I didn't even want to do that all night. I just wasted my night. Whatever that activity is for you, if you would like to fill your time with something else, I think having the picture can really help with like setting intentions. So like that can be whatever intention you want it to be. I really like setting the intention of like, what do I want to do today? What does she want to do today? Hey, little me, what do you want to do? What does little me want to get into today? Sometimes the crushing weight of adulthood responsibilities clouds your judgment and you're like, I don't know. I don't know. I can't think about it. There's too much. I don't, I just don't know. The adult brain is just not in a space to be able to connect with like fun and whimsy and there's just too much going on. Judgment's too clouded. But younger you, reconnecting with younger you in such a visual way really helps you like connect with those deeper impulses, those things that like before people told you that's childish, that's you're an adult, stop doing that. Before all that, right? Do you want to build some Legos? You want to go play some games? You want to make some cookies? You know what I mean? It's the little things. It's the little things. And sometimes we're just too bogged down with life and experience experiences and everything to like really think about and get in touch with what we would just really love to do at our core. But having that little reminder is very helpful. The last thing is a mindfulness practice. But before you go, no, nah, 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 shut up, shut up, mindfulness. I've heard it a million times. This is like a particular kind of childlike reconnection mindfulness. So this is a mindfulness where instead of like sitting with your thoughts, letting them pass, sitting with your thoughts, just like letting them flow through you. Instead, you're sitting with your thoughts and then kind of letting the very idealistic day dreamy thoughts take over. It's like, you know, at night before you go to bed and sometimes you're like, I'm just gonna like dream up this little scenario, like this crazy little scenario. It's like that, but having like sessions for yourself where you dream of just like the farthest limits, the highest reaches of where your life could go, where you would want to explore in your personal life, in your interpersonal life, in your career, in your hobbies. You just let your mind wander. You let the daydreams take you to the dreamiest dreams 
beliefs you can possibly have with no limits. That's how we would daydream as children. We would let our minds take over and let us believe anything about ourselves. The sky was the limit. There is nothing keeping our dreams based in reality, I guess. And like, that's really how it should be because the way that I have operated in life, I would say in like the past five years is solely in delusion, solely in like childlike daydream delusion. And that has gotten me to where I am and has allowed me to be able to do this for a living is just truly being delusional and truly being like, what do I actually want to do? What can I do? How far can I take this? Yes, I spent lots of hours and time and money <laughs> and mental space and mental health coins and all and and yes, I spent a lot of that on law school and being a lawyer for a year. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. We can throw all that out the window. We don't need to, do, we don't need to keep going down that path because that's what everybody in your life would tell you or that's what everyone would advise you. No, we can do whatever it is that like you are dreaming about constantly. What are you thinking about at all times and you can't stop yourself from thinking about? Go towards that. You can't really have those moments with yourself without giving yourself the freedom and the space to just like have those kind of delulu day dream moments. You just don't really have those moments to like connect with your craziest dreams without having a dedicated time and space for it. So definitely a mindfulness practice, but rooted in daydreams and belief in yourself, deepest desires in life <laughs> and seeing those deepest desires fulfilled and how you would see those fulfilled and how you would live your dream life. Welcome all of those thoughts. Welcome, welcome, welcome them all in. No matter how crazy, no matter how Delulu, okay, welcome them in and sit with them, let them pass and hold on to the ones that really mean something to you. And at a later time, apart from this mindfulness moment, at a later time, think about how you can adjust your life even a little to move closer to those goals and those daydreams that you have in that moment. I think you'd be surprised at like how much you can adjust your life to accommodate for those dreams. And eventually you'll look around and your life is that dream <laughs> that you didn't even know was possible. So you wouldn't have that. You wouldn't be able to have that kind of roadmap without having the Delulu mindfulness moments. The last tip is to ask yourself at the end of every day, whether it's like verbally, whether it's in your head, whether it's written on paper, ask yourself, how's your day? Like exactly how, if your parents did this when you were younger, exactly like a caring parent who at the end of every day goes, how was your day? And you go, it was fine. Ask yourself how your day was, but answer it at the best of your ability. Answer it as fully and completely and with every emotion and every wish and observation, every experience, detail, put into writing, into words, into thought answer it every day that you can and I think this is also just a good mindfulness practice it's a good mindfulness practice it's a good checking in with yourself practice and lastly I think it's just a good practice to affirm you <laughs> and like feeling seen by somebody and if you are the only person that can make yourself feel seen in that way that's okay that's amazing that's great that you have yourself to be able to hold space for yourself at the end of the day and feel seen by yourself at the end of the day because if you can't then who can you know if you can't provide that blueprint for how you can hold space for yourself and how you can celebrate yourself small small wins, large wins. If you can't create that foundation, then you don't know how to show other people how to treat you and how to welcome in kind of like healthy, supportive relationships in your life. Not that your life has to have, you know, these relationships as like pillars, but either way, just having that foundation with yourself is so important. And having that check-in with yourself, if no one else will, you know, like you will, and you have yourself to rely on. And there's nothing like knowing that you always have yourself to rely on. Those are all of my tips and advice for reconnecting with and healing your inner child. I wrote down some of the signs I've seen in my life and others' lives who are working on healing and reconnecting with their inner child. It is shocking how much can change in your emotional world, in your personal world, your outer world, just by healing that inner child in you and telling that inner child in you, everything's okay, you're okay, you're enough, you are loved, you are supported, and giving that inner child in you the space to really just be yourself and follow your heart, <laughs> as corny as it sounds. But these are some of the signs that I've seen, I think it's very telling and it shows just how important this whole process is. Learning positive self-talk, being more patient and more forgiving with proper boundaries, of course. <laughs> Putting your needs first. I think when you really know who you are, you really know what you need from yourself. If you're a people pleaser who <laughs> feels like you need to keep doing and doing and doing and doing for others to feel that like want or feel enough for somebody because maybe that was your family dynamic growing up. If you're a people pleaser, you're always putting other people first. So as soon as you heal those childhood wounds, 
wounds of having to do 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 for others to be seen and to be valued in your familial dynamic once you heal those wounds you don't need to put people first anymore and you realize the value in putting yourself first and doing what you can for others when possible it's a much better <laughs> experience and you feel so much more balanced and so much more sustainable trust me better emotional regulation you stop feeling like you're in trouble all the time for something and you don't know what it is that you feel like you're in trouble for but you just know there's something definitely stop feeling like that you can take ownership over mistakes without over explaining I think that's something that a lot of people who got a lot of harsh criticism or punishment when they were children deal with is they feel like they have to explain 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 like oh well I did this because this isn't this when all you need to say is oh got it understood next time I got you that's that over explaining is just trying to be seen and trying to kind of like not get in trouble not get in trouble that looming like trouble over a lot of us from being yelled at a lot as a kid you know like you're not in trouble <laughs> you just made a normal mistake people can make mistakes it doesn't say anything about you and you won't be in trouble so you don't need to over explain yourself and in fact not over explaining makes people trust you more in my experience I think over explaining makes you seem a little bit untrustworthy or maybe an unreliable perspective if like you're over explaining over explaining but like at the end of the day you're over explaining a mistake so like do you really see that this was a mistake or are you kind of trying to justify it it makes you seem all the more trustworthy when you can just own like, oh, sh true. That was a mistake. I got you. No need to explain. Trusting others to share your own feelings with them. Welcoming in more healthy friends and partners into your life. Letting go of perfectionism. This is another thing that's like, no, it has to be perfect, perfect, perfect. Otherwise I'm in trouble. <laughs> you won't be in trouble. Things don't have to be perfect. It's okay. A more clear sense of self and identity. You really grow into who you are and you really touch base with like the things that you love and the things that bring you joy when you connect with that inner child and you don't let let the pressures of the world or other people's opinions cloud those things. You clear all that cloudy judgment away and you're really able to like see with a clear eye what makes you happy, who you are. There's nothing brighter than somebody who is like walking in their purpose and like walking in their true identity and unapologetically themselves. And then the last one is just less critical of yourself and others, which kind of goes hand in hand with positive self-talk, but less critical of others too is such a huge one because I think when you do have that critical voice of like whether it was a parent, whoever in your head, that critical voice is not just directed towards you. It's directed towards everybody. And that is a miserable place to be in in life is to constantly, constantly be nitpicking and criticizing everybody around you. It is not a fun place to be. You stew in negative emotions. You don't really feel good about yourself after criticizing people. And at its worst, it seeps out and affects the people in your life. You start criticizing people you love and you're like, what am I doing? I don't care how they do their hair, but I'm still criticizing it because it's just like a habit of mine. Criticism will eat away at you, will eat away at relationships, will eat away at your joy. Obviously there's a time and place for criticism, but it's not all the time and it's not that constant voice in your head directed at you and everybody around you. In my experience, healing that inner child has completely rid of that critical voice in my head to where if something does come up, either directed at me or somebody else, I immediately can shut it down. I can acknowledge it as something that's seeping up from the past and I can shut it down immediately. I want that for everybody on this planet. <laughs> Thank you so much y'all for listening to all these tips. I want to share a couple stupid memes with you. Usually I share a nice little thoughtful quote but this time around it's gonna be a stupid meme. The first is rediscovering my childlike wonder about the world is going to be huge this summer so agreed. Okay we're all gonna rediscover our childlike wonder about the world. Gonna have a better summer for it. And the next is the only reason why 10 year olds are destroying stupidly overpriced products at Sephora to make skincare smoothies is because they aren't being given access to a yard with a variety of mud sticks, rocks, puddles, and old ceramic planters to make potions in. The children yearn for the apothecary. <laughs> I love that, but also like we too yearn for the apothecary, okay? And whatever the apothecary is for you, whether it's the tactile kinetic sand, whether it's mud and dirt in the lawn, or whether it's your skincare smoothies, embrace it. Absolutely embrace it. Embrace it for the rest of this year. Embrace it for the rest of your life. Go forth and heal that inner child. Hug them tightly tell them they're enough tell them they're doing great tell them they are loved and they are seen i love you stay cozy bye